Okay, I'd like it if we could uh, take our Bibles together this morning. We'll start by turning to Philippians chapter number 4. Philippians chapter number 4, and you can look for verse number 6 when you get there. Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 6. When you get to know somebody really well, maybe somebody that you've spent a lot of time with through the years, maybe a family member, uh, certainly it's common with spouses, sometimes you can get to the point where uh, some, somebody that you know really well is telling a story, and uh, if, they, if they bog down, you, can, you could finish the story for them, because <laughs> they have certain stories that they love to tell, and maybe they've told them many times to many different people, and certainly... Uh, I think that we can uh, relate to that. Some people that uh, are close people, family members and spouses especially, uh, you've heard them tell certain stories that are dear to them or that they have a lot of uh, uh, fun telling. Uh, they tell certain stories and you think, oh man, I know where this, go- this story is going. I know, the, I know the, the, the important part of the story. I know the, the punchline or the, the key part of the story right when you're you know, right to the climax of the tale. Uh, sometimes you could finish those stories for people. You'd be like, oh yeah, I know where this is going. <laughs> And if, uh, if all of a sudden, you know, the phone rings and they don't finish the story, they, they have to leave for a second, man, you could just jump in there and, oh, I know exactly about how that story went, even if you weren't there. And uh, that, can be, that can be a lot of fun. You may have heard the same story so many times that uh, you can tell the story just as well as they can. Or you might even feel like you can tell the story better than they can. <laughs> so nice we get that idea, too. But when, when there's a familiar and a loved story that's, that's you know, told over and over again, and you love hearing that story over and over again, um, you can at times listen to that retelling of a familiar story with anticipation, waiting for the perfect climax of the tale. You know, that moment where it's like, okay, here comes the best part of the story. And uh, and you, you look forward to it, you anticipate it, and you get excited, and you think, man, this is it. We're about to get to the good part. Some, t- some stories take a little while to ramp up, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, it's like the first half of the story is really boring, but the second half makes up for it. And uh, so sometimes you're, you're, you're listening to something and you're going, okay, okay, we're get, about to get to the good part. We're about to get to the good part. This is good. I'm really excited. And that can happen in our experiences in, in ordinary activities. But I hope that that's how you feel about the passage of Scripture we're going to be studying this morning. Because I feel like as we've been looking through this series of thoughts on thinking... Uh, that I've really been looking forward not only to the verse we're going to look at today, but particularly this message, because I think that this message is one of the most pivotal points in this series of studies that we're doing. And so I think I'm really excited. I'm really like, oh boy, I've been waiting for this. And so I hope that uh, you're excited about it. Um, I hope that you feel like me saying, finally, (laughs) I've been really looking forward to getting to this part. And so you might have been looking forward to this verse, really expecting it, because uh, we're going to read verses 6 to 8, but particularly verse 8 is a verse that if, you, if you're familiar with the scriptures, you'd think, boy, if we're going to talk about thoughts on thinking, we're going to have to hit Philippians 4, 8 pretty soon. And uh, so you may have been expecting it. But here we go. Let's start by reading the text of scripture before us this morning, starting in verse number 6. The Bible says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. All right, let's ask God's guidance before we get into this. Heavenly Father, we certainly have a great need of your spirit to guide and direct in our study this morning. I pray that you would present the truth to us from your word in a way that would most grip our hearts and enable us to see your purpose for us. I pray that by your spirit I'd be enabled to deliver your truth in a way that would be clear and concise and helpful. That each of us would take what you have for us today and make the decisions you want us to make in our own lives and our own thoughts. Please guide and direct, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, as I said, we're continuing our series, Thoughts on Thinking. We're going to talk this morning about the theme of true thoughts. Uh, Because we see here in Philippians 4 and verse 8 that uh, it's going to emphasize a lot of the type of thoughts that we need to think as Christians seeking to follow after God in our thought lives. Now, this is... This is, I think, the fifth study in this series, something like that, uh, that we've done already. And so we've spent several weeks now introducing the theme of the godly management of our thought lives. 
we've been talking about the ideas, the philosophies, the mindset behind these themes that really give us some direction and understanding. And as we have looked at the mindset and the, the, the theme of the godly management of our thought lives, uh, it's now helpful for us that we get to get into some of the, the details of our thought lives. And so we've done a lot of introductions sort of to work ourselves to the point where we could get to this point, where we could get to the point where, okay, we could deal with this theme of what we're going to think about. What does God want us to think about? And so here we find in this portion of scripture that God is gracious enough to give us uh, an emphasis on some detailed guidelines for our minds and our thought lives. Uh, God gives us some details. I'm thankful that God isn't just vague in general in the teaching of the Word of God. Uh, God gives us a lot of specific details. Hallelujah. And so we're able to take something that's going to be helpful, for you, helpful to us. Now, it's, it's probably immediately apparent to anybody listening that when we look at verse 8, there's a lot to cover there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's, there's an age-old question people have asked many times. How do you eat an elephant? And the answer is always the same, one bite at a time. <laughs> and verse 8 here is one of the most, I believe, helpful and powerful verses on the theme of the thought life of the Christian. And there's so much packed into this verse that I think we need to handle it. If we're going to do any justice to digesting the full value of this pivotal verse, yeah. uh, I think we need to take it in a few different bites. And so we're not going to cover the whole verse this morning, but we, we're, we're going to be able, as the Lord leads and allows, in time to work our way through this verse in the next several studies. Amen. So as we talk about our thought lives this morning, the theme that we're going to center on this morning is the truth. Yeah. The truth. Right. Because he says, finally, brethren, and that's how I feel when we get to this many, finally, we get to get finally. to this, oh, finally, yeah. finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. And if we pass over the rest of the verse for now, we can come to the end of it, it says, think on these things. Whatsoever things are true, think on these things. Yeah. And so it's tremendously important to understand that one of the keys to a successful thought life is to center on the truth. Amen. We need the truth. Yeah. You know, we live in a world where there is, there's falsehood and lies all around us. They're abounding right. everywhere. I mean, Amen. you don't have to look far to find deceit and falsehood. It, right. It's easy. It's, it's, it's everywhere. There's yeah. lots of it. Yeah. But truth is not hard to find. That's right. Truth is not difficult to find. It's not hidden by God. It's actually quite accessible. Sometimes we might feel a little like the psalmist. Here's what the psalmist wrote in Psalm 116, verse 11. He said, I said in my haste, all men are liars. Amen. Just yeah. wrote off all of society. Oh, they're all liars. A whole bunch of them. You know, I can't believe anybody. And sometimes we might feel that way. Man, there's, truth is hard to find. Truth is really hard to find. But it's not. It's. He says, I said in my haste. And when he thought about it a little farther, he thought, well, maybe I was too hasty to say all men are liars. Amen. Uh, be very careful using the word all. You might be a liar. Yeah. Uh, Amen. But he was frustrated. And sometimes we get frustrated by all the falsehood that we see in our world. Yeah. religiously, doctrinally, politically, socially, relationally, yeah. there's a lot of falsehood and a lot of deceit. That's right. But God has a lot of truth available to us as his children. And all of mankind has truth accessible to them one way or another. Though every man is a liar, God mm -hmm. is still true. Yeah. And uh, God still gives us truth. Right. Uh, mankind comes forth from the womb speaking lies. The Bible says, you know, <laughs> uh, people just, lying comes very easily to us. We are so corrupt in our own nature that lying is very easy. Yeah. For us to think thoughts that center around the truth, mm -hmm. we can easily access the power of true thoughts yeah. by emphasizing God. When we think about God, we'll find a great avenue for truth because God is truth. And yes. uh, familiar to us is John 14 and verse 6 where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said he is truth. Yeah. And God yeah. is the source of all truth. Every truth that we can receive comes from the Lord because he's the originator of all that is true and right and good. Yeah. And so we need to have his truth. Now, it might seem like an oversimplification. And I mean, we're in church. You know, we, we, we're trying to seek after God. It might seem like it's too simple a statement to say that if we want truth, we need to think about God. Mm -hmm. But it's important because it's easy for us to develop, I believe, a distorted perspective about God. A lot of times in our own hearts and minds, through the experiences of life, through maybe what we've been told or taught in a variety of environments and situations, sometimes we can develop an idea of God in our mind that's it's just not consistent with reality. Right. 
uh, we can start to think that God is a lot of things that, that just aren't true. Yeah. And we need to be very careful that our thoughts are based on truth, especially in the relationship with God, because that's the foundation for everything else that God wants to do in our lives. We need to understand right. Him. Yeah. So we need to be very careful to have the right perspective of our Lord, because God is very, very clear about who He is and what He does and what He expects. A lot of people get bad ideas about God. People, especially who have been taught false things from other religions or from humanist perspective, sometimes they have a very bad perspective perspective of God. They think he's distant. They might think he's uncaring. They might think he's not paying attention to their life. They might think even at times that he's unfair or that he's a bully or that he's unjust or that he's harsh and always angry. Uh, we need to have a balanced perspective of God because when we think the truth about God in our hearts and minds, that's a foundation point for us to be able to have a stable thought life, right. understanding the truth about God. Yeah. If we don't think truth about God, when we, when we sort of have our image of God in our mind, what we picture him to be like, mm -hmm. if we don't have the truth about God, we're going to struggle to understand life mm -hmm. and we're going to struggle to understand eternity. Right. The truth about God is absolutely vital. Yeah. Now, if we want to understand life, if we want to understand eternity, if we want to understand God, how do we remedy any false conceptions that we might have about God? Mm -hmm. Well, we do have an answer for that. And I'm so thankful that we do have a clear answer for that because God has given us a source of truth that enables us to find a reliable understanding of God and of his direction for our daily lives. Mm -hmm. God has given us what we need to be able to see the truth. Yes. Now, in John 17 and verse 17, Jesus said to the Father, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Yeah. And I know I've probably probably brought that verse up, mm -hmm. I don't know, hundreds of times probably. It uh, wouldn't surprise me if it was hundreds <laughs> of times we've talked about that verse. But it's so vital for us to understand that God's word, the Bible that we've been given, is yeah. truth. It's absolutely yeah. and totally reliable. Yeah. Every every word of God is pure, the Bible says, and it's, it's a, dependable for us. So if we want to understand God, if we want to understand ourselves, if we want to understand people around us, yeah. boy, that's tough. If we want to understand yeah. our society, yeah. we'll find answers in the word of God. Right. We'll find truth in the Word of God. And those are the thoughts that we need to be constantly filling our minds with. Amen. Thoughts of the Word of God, thoughts yeah. of God's truth, thoughts of the dependable, reliable truth that God has given to us. We need truth in our thoughts. And when we need truth in our thoughts, we will find truth and the answers to the questions of life in God's Word. Now, thinking about the truths of God and dwelling on those things... Um, processing them, trying to understand them, meditating on them, rejoicing in them. Thinking about the truths of God's word will do a lot of things that will be helpful and powerful in your life. First of all, they will enrich your life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like pouring a, a spiritual investment in your life. Every time you put yeah. the word of God into your, into your mind and into your heart, it will enrich your life. It will encourage your life. I can't tell you how many times God's word and a promise from scripture has encouraged me. Maybe it's a promise that God gave in the scripture to me. Maybe it's a story where, you know, somebody in the Bible is going through something and, and uh, God came through for them. Those stories encourage me. Uh, God is, is encouraging us through the truth of the word. Yeah. Well, the Bible's encouraging. If you ever get discouraged, just start getting the word of God into you. Start thinking about what God has said and what God has done and what God has recorded for us in the Bible. Yeah. So God's word will enrich you and will encourage you, but it will also enable you because God's word is powerful. And when it fills our hearts and mind, it enables us to take steps of faith and enables us to go forward for God in our lives, in our ministry, in our community, in our vocations, in our relationships, in our families, in the opportunities that God gives to us. The truth of the word of God will so help our mindset that it will enable us to go forward in areas that we never could have before. And so God's word is a key source of truth for our mindset. Whatever we're going to think about, whatever we're going to dwell on in our mind, the truth of the word of God needs to be a part of our total mindset. It yeah. shouldn't just be something that we think about Sunday or that we think about for five minutes in the morning when we have our, our, our personal devotions or five minutes in the evening when we're getting ready for bed and we're going to take some time with the word of God. It shouldn't just be you know, small sliver of our life. The Word of God should color our whole worldview, yeah. our whole perspective Amen. of life. The Word of God and the truth of the Word of God is so foundationally important. Mm -hmm. In our mindset, it's absolutely vital. Amen. Yeah. And now when it comes right. to truth, it's very easy for us as Christians, and I, I hope that every Christian will agree that a false doctrine 
is heinous and awful. it's very, very dangerous and destructive. destructive now, some christians don't like to talk about doctrine because they think it's too divisive, but false doctrine is extremely dangerous and extremely wrong and if you think i'm using too strong a term, i'm not using as strong a term as the bible does because in second peter chapter two and verse one, god refers to uh, damnable heresies. Yes. false teaching is very strongly condemned in the scripture and this isn't the point of the message, but but as a side note, false teaching, when we let false teaching into our mindset, it's incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. We need to think on things that are true. Amen. Things that are true based on the word of God especially. Yes. You know what? Lies send people to hell forever. Amen. When they the lies are in their hearts and in yep. their minds, lies can send people to, to hell forever. Yep. Think about that for right. a second. That's horrible. That shows you the power of falsehood entering into somebody's thought processes and their mindset. Mm -hmm. The lies of self-righteousness, mm -hmm. the lies of salvation by works, the lies of salvation by religious association, the lies of salvation by baptism, mm -hmm. and, and a host of other lies. When people embrace them in their mindset, those lies that you can get to heaven any other way than by the blood of Jesus Christ, those lies in a person's thought process and mindset can lead them to eternal destruction. Yeah, that's right. So the mindset of truth is incredibly important at the very foundation point of salvation. Yeah. But certainly it really proceeds not just in our salvation, but it proceeds into our Christian life as well. Our mindset needs to be so centered upon truth because the, the error of the danger of darkness can really destroy us. Yeah. With lost people, it's tremendously powerful. We have seen that. We, we who have studied the Word of God and know the scriptural truth about the doctrine of salvation, that is by faith in Jesus Christ, that God by grace has offered it as a free gift, Amen. that is received by calling upon, upon God in repentance of faith, yeah. that is not worked for or earned. When we understand that, we know how powerful that truth is. Yeah. But the truth is, it, God tells us that Satan has blinded the minds mm -hmm. of them that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine into them. Yeah. Who is Satan? He is the father of all lies. lies. Amen. How does he yeah. blind their minds? By getting lies into them. Yeah. He, he presents lies and falsehoods mm -hmm. and, and teaches them. And when people embrace the lies of the father of lies yeah. and embrace that mindset of deception and deceit and embrace false things in their mindset, mm -hmm. their minds are blinded to the truth. Right. And... and I want you to keep that thought in mind about minds being blind to the truth because we're going to come back to that a little bit. Mm. We need the truth in our mindset as Christians too. Now, untrue thoughts can be incredibly damaging to our own walk with God, yeah. our own stability, our own perception of the world around us. Mm. We need truth in our minds. Yeah. Now, one of the reasons this is so vital to talk about and one of the reasons that it's so important that we need the Word of God to give clarity to truth mm -hmm. in our minds is because if I say we need to think thoughts that are true, yeah. a lot of people will respond by saying, of course my thoughts are true. That's all I ever think of. My yeah. thoughts are true already. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you were deceived, would you know it? Mm -hmm. If you were thinking things that weren't true and you were deceived about those things, would you know it? Well, obviously not, because then you wouldn't be deceived. Yeah. And if you knew they weren't true, you probably wouldn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about things. Right. And so it's very important for us to take the Word of God and say, what is truth foundationally from God? Because sometimes we believe things that we think are true. We really believe them. But then God opens our eyes through the Scripture. We go, wow, I didn't even realize that, that I was deceived. And this is why truth is so important. Because people who are deceived... Don't know they're deceived. Amen. I mean, that should be pretty obvious, right? But that's why it's so important for us to talk about truth in our mindsets. We never know we've been deceived until later. Mm. And sometimes it might be a period of long years of believing something that's not true before we ever find out. Right. And I'm sure thankful that when I get to heaven and stand before Jesus, he's going to clear up all the stuff I believe that wasn't true. Because there's been a lot of things in life where, you know, we may have embraced some thought or mindset or some perspective of something, and we were just wrong. And we might not find out until we see Jesus. Hopefully, it's not the important things of life, but we will be able to see those things more clearly then. We need to be very careful to stabilize our minds on the Word of God. 
that's why i constantly am encouraging people get in the word of god every single day. yeah study the bible, meditate on the bible, read the bible um reinforce it in your mind by speaking it out loud to other people amen constantly be emphasizing truth in the word of god in your hearts and in your minds because that will give you stability in your mindset that will enable you to see clearly and it will protect you from the deceits of the world from false teachers that abound all around us we need an objective stable foundation of truth to build our lives upon that's why jesus said uh he that hears my words and, and follows them is like a man who builds his house on a rock we need that foundation of god's word to build our lives upon now we've talked a little bit about the lies that are told to us um, in our society and how it's dangerous for us to embrace in our mindset and our thinking and yeah. spend a lot of time dwelling on things that aren't true but there's another key area that's important for us to deal with as we talk about true thoughts and that is this the lies we tell ourselves yeah because yeah. that is incredibly common in our own lives we we in our humanity uh, have so been swayed by the sinfulness of our own flesh and by the work of evil around us and the temptations that are thrown in our paths that sometimes our sinful nature tends to tends to toward even self-deception and this is incredibly powerful these sometimes can be easier to detect because hopefully you know it's not true the first time you say it to yourself yeah. You know, we, we can sometimes know when we're sort of slanting things a little bit in our own mindsets and we might be giving things a little more emphasis than is maybe actually valid. Sometimes we tell ourselves lies about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we tell ourselves lies about our past. Mm -hmm. well, we can tell ourselves uh, lies about our past and say, what I did wasn't really that bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't actually, I wasn't, I mean, you know, I didn't live that bad. Or, or sometimes, man. I was the worst person ever. You know, sometimes we over exaggerate. Sometimes we tell ourselves lies about ourselves. Mm -hmm. They're just not based in fact, in our past. Sometimes we tell ourselves lies about our present. Mm -hmm. I'm doing okay. I'm right with God. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the right thing. I'm living for the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes we can deceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we tell ourselves about our present. I'm not making any difference. Mm -hmm. my, my walk with God is, is, isn't making a difference. I'm not seeing God work. Nothing's happening. My prayers aren't being answered. We lie to ourselves about what's going on in our present. Yeah. Sometimes we lie to ourselves about our future. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to make it. God can never use me. Mm -hmm. My future is bleak. It's hopeless. There's no opportunity. I'm never going to see God answer prayer. I'm never going to see miracles. Mm -hmm. I'm never. Gonna, it, my life is too much of a mess for God to fix it. Yeah. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we tell ourselves lies about the future. I'm going to serve God. Well, you're not serving him right now. What's going to change between now and the future? If you don't make changes yeah. now, your future will probably be exactly the way your present is. Yeah. We can make a lot of statements about ourselves, past, present, and future, that just aren't true. Yeah. And we can convince ourselves of things yeah. that just aren't true. Mm -hmm. We need to speak the truth in our hearts. That's right. Sometimes we tell ourselves lies about other people, mm -hmm. about their past. Wow, what they did, blah, blah, blah. you know, we can go off on on all the faults that might be exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can we can exaggerate the qualities of people. Yeah. Oh, that person, I know they do bad stuff now, but they've always been really good. I mean, it should we should give people the benefit of the doubt and try to yeah. speak good of people, but we need to be honest about truth. Okay, yeah. don't whitewash over things that right. need to be dealt with. Right. Or we might lie about people's presence what they're doing now we might exaggerate in our own hearts and minds what's going on and what their real situation is and what people's motives are we need to be very careful to stick to the truth yeah the things that are objectively verifiably true we can also lie about people's future mm -hmm. they're never going to make it <laughs> look at their lives i mean there's no hope for that person yeah or here's one that, that sometimes we fall into no that person won't listen if i try to tell them the gospel mm -hmm. Well, how do you know? Exactly. Don't tell yourself lies like that. Amen. You don't know that's true. Yeah. Or you might say, there's there's lots of lies we can tell each other, tell about each other or about ourselves. And it's so easy for us because it, it feels like a better picture to paint this picture in our minds of ourselves, of our situation, of other people. Um, we can paint this wrong picture in our minds that temporarily makes us feel better. You know, it might make us feel better about ourselves or about 
uh, uh, might might feel good to make excuses for ourselves, make excuses for our past, why we didn't do what we did, should have done, make excuses for our future, why we why we don't have to live up to certain expectations that God has for our lives. Uh, it's very easy for us to paint a picture about other people, about uh, what they've done or what they haven't done, because it makes us feel better about ourselves. And this can be incredibly damaging. Incredibly damaging. One of the scariest things that I've uh, that I've studied in this this idea of our mindset. One of the scariest things is that researchers have talked about how they've they found that people uh, can actually create false memories in their minds. Mm -hmm. If you tell yourself certain things that are untrue. If you tell yourself it's true often enough, if you visualize it, if you uh, recreate it in your mind, if you do certain things to reproduce certain feelings and thoughts and memories in your mind, uh, the researchers have said that you can actually get to the point where you really think it happened. Mm -hmm. Fake memories can drown out real memories. Yeah. Now that terrifies me. Yeah. Amen. Because I think that's a lot of times what goes on in our lives when we start filling our minds with thoughts that aren't true. And at the beginning, we're like, well, it's not exactly maybe 100%, and you know, we, mm -hmm. if we were really truly honest, we, we would know, okay, well, I might be exaggerating, I might be overemphasizing something, I might be making assumptions, mm -hmm. I might be making judgments I don't know the truth about, but if we keep repeating false thoughts in our minds over and over and over again, we can develop a mindset that's rooted in things that aren't even true, but we can't tell anymore. Right. If you paint that picture long enough, it's like, you know, watercolors. Mm -hmm. You do a watercolor painting over top of another painting, you can still see the original through. Yeah. You know, it's it's, it's kind of um, semi-transparent. Yeah. If you do that enough times, eventually you might not see the original painting at all. All you see is that watercolor you've painted over top of it yeah. that makes you feel better about something or you, you feel is is uh, more valid. But the truth is much more important than how we feel. Yeah. About a situation. Right. Truth is important. Over and over, you, you search the scriptures. Look at how many times the Bible talks about truth. Mm -hmm. And true, and Jesus saying over and over again, verily, verily, I say to you, truly, truly, I say to you, the truth is absolutely essential in our mindsets, because otherwise we can create this fantasy world in our mind that has no basis in reality. Mm -hmm. We can literally create inaccurate memories that are not true in our minds. This is, I believe, why you find people that, for example, you don't, you don't hopefully find too many of them, but people who say, I've been abducted by aliens, and this is what happened to me, and they tell the story, and you can't, you can't convince them it didn't happen, <laughs> even though it really didn't happen. Okay, people who tell you they've been abducted by aliens, don't buy into it, okay? Just, just don't buy into it. But don't assume they're lying either, mm -hmm. because they might really believe it happened. Yeah. Because they've thought about aliens so much, and they've imagined what it would be like so much, that eventually they've started to think, what would have happened if I had been abducted? Oh, and they start imagining and remembering, remembering things that didn't happen. And the next thing you know, <laughs> down the road, they, they might actually really believe that it did happen. Yeah. And nobody can shake them loose from it. Mm -hmm. And that is hugely dangerous in our mindset. Yeah. Because if we start really believing something that's not true, yeah. whether it's false doctrine, mm -hmm. whether it's create self-created memories yeah. whether it's prejudices against people whether it's perceptions of our own experience and, and value in god's work yeah. we can get to the point where we've told ourselves the same lie so many times that nobody can convince us it's a lie that's right and that's dangerous mm -hmm. because if nobody can convince you that the lie is a lie yeah. you're gonna be stuck in that lie until god intervenes yeah that's the right. only hope. Right. Satan can blind minds. Yeah. But we can also blind our own minds. Yeah. We can sear our own conscience, as the Bible said. Uh, we need to be very careful to have truth in our mindsets. Only God knows how much of the hurt that we carry mm -hmm. is based on distorted memories from misunderstandings and wrong impressions that have been converted into our minds into something that, to us, it's concrete fact. Yeah. I mean, nobody could change it. We know it's fact. But it was all just based on, on non-factual input that we've allowed to be build it up into the point where it's fact. Yeah. We need to be very careful about that. This is why I 
I've many times discouraged people from conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of what's said is probably not true. Yeah. But if you tell yourself enough times that the world is out to get you and that that the man is trying to, you know, manipulate and oppress and all this sort of, if you tell yourself that enough times, you're going to become one of those paranoid, yeah. delusional conspiracy theorists who believe that that all of society is out to get you. <laughs> now the devil's out to get you. Yeah. And there are a lot of people that would like to take what you have. But we need to be very careful to have a balanced mindset that's not just all wrapped up in things that we don't know are true. Right. If you don't know it's true, you need to be very careful about dwelling on it for too long. Yeah. Because it can really warp our mindset. This is why truth is so important. Now, I'm already over time, and I'm just finishing my introduction. Great job. Great job. So I'm going to use a few rollover <laughs> minutes this morning. Why is, the, are, is true thoughts so important? I'm going to give you three reasons why true thoughts are so important. These three key reasons are going to help us understand why, why we need, have, need to have a Bible truth and a truth in our mindset. The first one that I wanted to talk about is found in Psalm 51 and verse 6. This is the psalm where David uh, is writing about his, um, uh, his repentance over the sin and the situation he had with Bathsheba where he committed adultery. And he's acknowledging here God's interest in the most inner thoughts of his heart. He says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. He says, God, what God wants in my inward parts, my heart, my mind, my thoughts, God, God desires truth there. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we need to understand is God's priority. God's priority for our thought lives is truth. That's what makes God happy. You know what? God Amen. is yearning and longing to see truth in our hearts and minds. Yeah. That's what makes him happy. God is truth. And so in the hidden parts of our hearts and mind, God wants to find truth. He made us as vessels into which he could pour truth. And fill us up with that truth. And I believe that God loves to look into the vessel of our minds and see in the pools of truth in our mind a reflection of his nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what God's looking for in your mind and mine. Yeah. Seeing his likeness reflected in the truth in our thoughts brings God great joy. Yeah. God loves that. Mm -hmm. If truth in my mind is important to God, then it's important. If this is God's priority, then it's important. God is passionate about truth, and we need to be passionate about truth. Mm -hmm. It needs to be absolutely urgent in our lives that truth is emphasized in what we say, obviously, but we're talking today about even what we think. We need to be em emphasizing truth. If we are not passionate about truth, we can be working against the very God who loved us and made us for himself. Yeah. The second reason we need truth in our minds is that it's an effective tool to help us be clean. Psalm 119 verse 11 it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we can change a couple words there. I don't want to correct scripture. This is accurate and correct. But to help, it, help us understand how this connects with our thoughts. We could say it this way. Thy truth, because thy word is truth, thy truth have I hid in my mind that I might not sin against thee. The mind and heart are very closely connected in Scripture. So when we take God's <coughs> truth and we're dwelling on it, we're thinking it, we're hiding in our hearts by memorization, that helps us not sin. Mm. That helps us not sin. And so we've seen God's priority, but secondly, God's purification is part of the reason we need truth in our minds so much, mm -hmm. because it helps keep us from doing wrong. You know what? I don't believe that David would have had to write that psalm about his repentance over the sin with Bathsheba if he had been filling his mind with truth and, and the thoughts of right. That's right. We need truth to keep us from sin. But then also, like David, when we have sinned, we need it to help clean us up. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Again, we see the truth of God's word connected with our, our hearts and our minds. We're taking heed to it. We're not just hearing it, but we're taking heed to it in our hearts and minds. That's how God works to cleanse us from the wrongs that we've done. So we've seen that we have God's priority. We see God's purification in our lives is helped by truth. But then thirdly, I wanted to turn to one last text, and that's Psalm number 15. 
And this is, this is a powerful and helpful passage of Scripture. Psalm number 15 gives us some of God's qualifications for who will be able to abide with him. Who can come into God's presence? Psalm 15 and verse 1. Uh, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And then he gives 11 characteristics of the type of people that God invites into his presence. Okay, so the next one is God's presence. Who gets into the presence of God to dwell in closeness with God? We're not going to read all of them for the sake of time, but look with me at verse 2. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Mm -hmm. Now, that verse always surprises me. It doesn't say in his lips. That's right. Speaketh the truth in his heart. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of person that gets close to God. Yeah. Not just people who speak the truth, but people who are really honest in their hearts to think the truth. They're not lying to themselves. They're not lying about each other. They're not lying about themselves. They're not lying about God. That's right. They're speaking the truth in their heart, they're just being honest with God. Amen. That's the kind of people God wants to get close to. Mm -hmm. You want to get close to God, just speak the truth in your heart. Speak the truth in your heart. That's a real key. Now, obviously walking uprightly and working righteousness, the other, mm -hmm. other things in this chapter are important too. That verse really grabs me. Speak it the truth in his heart. Yeah. Don't lie to yourself. That's right. Don't kid yourself. Amen. Don't be fake. Don't pretend yeah. to be something you're not. That's hypocrisy. Is lying to yourself about mm -hmm. yourself and lying to other people about yourself. Yeah. Be real in your heart and be honest mm -hmm. with yourself about yourself, about others, about what you've yeah. been through, about who God is in your life. Mm -hmm. We need truth in our inner thoughts. You know, somebody can't even get saved until they start thinking about some things that are true. Okay. You know what? I am a sinner. Yeah. God Amen. is just to judge my sin. Amen. You know what? Jesus is the only way of salvation. You know what? If I trust God by faith and ask him for salvation, he'll forgive me, he'll cleanse me, and adopt me into his family and give me everlasting life. Amen. Those true thoughts coming to somebody's heart is the beginning of a whole new spiritual life, being born again by grace. Mm -hmm. That's right. If it's important for a lost sinner to think the truth, mm -hmm. isn't it also vitally important for every Christian to emphasize truth in their own hearts. Yes. We need it. Right. We must anchor our minds in God's truth. Amen. Get that anchor down deep and don't right. cut it loose because we need God's truth to anchor our souls. That's right. And we need to be very careful about truth because not all truth is helpful for us to emphasize. Mm. And that's why we're going to continue through the rest of Philippians 4, 8, Lord willing, in the weeks ahead. Amen. Because some things are true that are not helpful to think about all the time. Right. There's a lot of bad things that you don't want to fill your mind with. Right. They might be true facts, but we're going to see in the weeks ahead that God wants us to dwell on things that are more than just truth. So we've got seven other characteristics to look at in the weeks ahead. But today, here's God's word. Think on some things that are true. Mm -hmm. God desires it, yes. God purifies us through the truth, mm -hmm. and God's presence is accessible mm -hmm. through speaking the truth in our hearts. Right. Let's pray as we close. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I'm so excited about the power of your truth to shape our thoughts and minds. I'm so excited about the message that you've given us from your word this morning and how it can really impact the lives of those who are here and all those who will hear it through our our repetition of the truth you've given to us today. Lord, may we take what you've given to us, apply it to our hearts and lives by your spirit, but also take it to others and encourage the truth wherever we go. That we would encourage people not only to speak the truth, but to think the truth in their deepest thoughts. Mm -hmm. Oh God, show us where we're wrong. Use your word to enlighten us to the real truth of what we think, what we believe, and what we, what we understand about you, about ourselves, and about each other. May truth reign in our hearts and minds today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.